You asked, what are the different types of hot water systems on the market? Hot water systems on average are replaced every 10 years. So there's a lot of new hot water systems being put in the market every year. In some instances, you might find your old hot water system has gone on a blink. And instead of just replacing it exactly with the same system or style that you had, it might actually be the right time to review what's going on in hot water and see if you can change technology and find a more suitable hot water system that will actually let you have lower running costs. So. What is the most efficient way to make hot water for my home? Generating hot water is one of the most energy intensive activities of a household. It's really where a lot of your electricity bill go into. It could be 20, 30, even 40% of your electricity bill could just be for hot water. Therefore, recommend a more sustainable option if it's available, look at it and then go for it. So the first one to talk about is the small 80 liter electric hot water tank. That is a really old technology. The problem is really with that type of technology is it's like a big kettle. It just keeps on boiling away all day. It costs you a fortune to run. It's only going to do about 80 liters and it does it every time the thermostat says I need to top up. If you actually want to have a really long shower, those 80 liter tanks are usually not long enough. It is relatively cheap to install 80 liter electric tanks, an expensive way to make hot water with a limited opportunity actually to replace this technology because if you got a unit and it sits on the balcony or under your stairs in the business it's very difficult to find something that is so compact and does the job you deserve better the next technology are the larger 250 315 or 400 liter electric hot water tanks you see them a lot on the side of houses they're the same technology as the smaller 80 liter tanks and usually they have two heating elements one at the bottom one on the top to heat the whole 250 350 400 liters the running cost for that particular unit is also relatively high but a lot of them are being put on an off-peak timer which means they get charged up usually during the middle of the night and you pay a lower fee for it maybe 15 cents per kilowatt hours instead of the normal 30 cents the problem is if you have a lot of showers during the day and you run out of that hot water you would have to wait again before the middle of the night to be reheated and so you're using about maybe 10 kilowatt hours a day of electricity for that particular technology. From a uh, CO2 point of view, of course, if you use normal coal fire powered electricity, it is not really an ideal piece of equipment to make hot water. But recently, we've had some product development, which is one is called uh, Catcher Power. And what that does is it takes your solar energy and actually transfers it into your hot water tank. So suddenly the kind of dinosaur hot water system that even a few years ago, the government thought of getting rid of can actually now be using renewable energy to make your hot water. And in that case, it becomes a very, very good technology. So the verdict for that one, without using solar electricity, it's a dinosaur, it's old technology. You shouldn't really use it much anymore. It's obsolete. But if you have solar electricity that you can then divert into that tank, then it is actually somehow become one of the most environmentally positive technologies and you're using renewable energy to make hot water. Then many of you guys in the modern houses would have an instantaneous gas hot water system. They're usually little sized units, they're on the side of the house. and a lot of gas is disposed of at that point in time to heat the water as it's traveling through that unit. It's very efficient in the sense that the gas is only used when you want the hot water. And the positive about that unit is you can't run out because literally, you know, you turn the hot water tap on and it just keeps on running, running, running. It doesn't stop. No. Now, the big political drawback really is nowadays is that these units use gas and that's a fossil fuel. It's not renewable and we really try to wean ourselves off from the gas. The verdict on that particular unit, it's compact, it's reliable, it's quite affordable, but it doesn't have a lot of positives on the environmental side because it uses the gas. We go back in time, the next technology is called the gas heated storage tank. So we've got under the tank a little bit of a pilot flame running with gas. The problem is that you're running the gas all the time. That means that your running cost overall for this type of unit is relatively high. And with the increase in gas prices, such units are quite expensive to run. So the verdict on this one, while compact and reliable, due to the current gas situation, my strong recommendation, don't replace it with the same unit go for an instantaneous gas or 
consider going electric because again electric at least you can replace with renewable electricity and from that perspective you have a better environmental outcome now we're going for rooftop solar hot water we've seen those units they sit on people's roofs a collector is placed on the roof and this collector usually there's two next to each other they have pipes running throughout it a bit like the hose that's sitting in the summer on your garden it heats up the water inside because hot water is lighter than cold water it then has a tank sitting above and the hot water moves out of the collector into the tank and gets collected there the collectors there are different forms they can be squarish uh, you've seen them on the roofs they also can be made out of uh, evacuated glass tubes so they look a bit futuristic uh, and sometimes they have the tank above or you can also have the tank below next to the house often the tank has an electric booster inside of it which means that if it is overcast for quite a few days or it's raining, you can still get hot water. Visually, those ones are a little bit more attractive because the large tanks on the roof, I never found them very attractive. Verdict, while reliable and very cheap to run, those solar hot water units actually on the roofs now will set you back between four and five thousand dollars so it's a lot of money initially to install for something that yes admittedly will have lower running costs will also environmentally be a positive and also you've got the fact that they can last up to 15 and 20 years but there's a big drawback and solar hot water is becoming less and less popular and that is that they occupy valuable real estate on your roof because nowadays people are trying to get larger and larger solar systems on the roof and you've got this big uh, couple of panels of solar hot water system there when it's possibly better to put solar panels on it and then use that electricity to make the hot water. While very popular a decade or more ago, some people find it now it looks rather ugly on the house and their popularity has definitely gone down. So with all these things, you know, I haven't really given you a, a technology now where you go, well, that's the best way to make hot water because everything has a plus and has a minus. We haven't got the silver bullet yet on the hot water system. So there is one particular modern technology that's coming through. It's not that cheap, but it is environmentally friendly. It is reliable and it keeps you in hot water for a long time. And that is the heat pump associated with the storage tank next to it. So this latest technology and possibly in some way my favorite takes basically the technology that we're using in the fridge reverses that technology where the temperature in the atmosphere is used to heat the water and so there's a refrigerant and it's uh, traveling through the heat pump and it exchanges the heat and moves it into the hot water and then that hot water is moved into a storage tank now they run on electricity but they can be programmed to run on renewable electricity. So you could have a solar system, you can divert the electricity of the solar system into your heat pump to only run when you have excess solar. You're in the middle of the day, you're using electricity in the house, but then suddenly your solar system generates more. And in this particular instance, the electricity that's generated just runs the heat pump and you're making your hot water literally for free. Now this then keeps the running cost of such technology of course very low because you're using your solar instead of exporting it for five cents a kilowatt hour, you're using it to make your hot water. You have to have a big enough solar system of course to have excess electricity, but if you do, if you have a large solar system, if you're looking for a new way to make hot water cheap and work hand in hand with your solar system, then a heat pump attached with the storage tank is possibly a great way to go as long as you have the room in your house for that storage tank. It is environmentally friendly, has a low carbon footprint, uh, the units last about 10 to 12 years. Uh, they are not that cheap yet. Um, we are looking at higher and higher production numbers, but you are looking maybe around the three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, similar to a solar hot water system, and also with similar low running costs. In summary, the top two options for me is the electric hot water tank sitting next to your house so that your solar electricity can move into your hot water or you use a heat pump, again using solar energy, to make the hot water and store it in the tank. 
Those are my two tops. The next one afterwards, environmentally wise, would possibly be the conventional older style solar hot water system, because again, they do last long and obviously they do use mainly the power of the sun and therefore renewable energy. So those would be my top three ways to generate hot water in the most environmentally friendly way. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell, and check out all our other videos. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.